Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're joining from. And very happy to have you here. This is the second session of the Youth Adaptation Dialogue and also a celebration of the World Youth Skills Day. Uh, my name is Joshua Amponsim, and I'm part of the Youth Adaptation Network of the Global Center on Adaptation. Our first session last month in June focused on local lead action, and today we'll be looking at skills, jobs, and entrepreneurship. And we have amazing speakers with us who'll be sharing their work with all of us. We will still give it a couple of minutes for those who are now downloading the Zoom app or trying to figure out um, how to join on the Zoom platform to get a chance to join us so that we do not leave anyone behind. And while we do that, you can take advantage of the chat function to just introduce yourself if you want to. So I already see that uh, Blanca Dabi already wrote hi. So hello back. Uh, and everyone, if you want to introduce yourself, please uh, use the chat to, to do so. Great. So in some few minutes, we're going to start. Um, just some housekeeping rules. Please mute yourself um, throughout the session unless um, you have the opportunity to speak, then you do so. If you have a question, directly put it in the chat. Um, and I say this, that do not wait for presentations to end before you ask your question because you will forget. So there are so many interesting conversations today uh, and things that will be shared. So as the speakers are talking, when a question comes to your mind, please put it in the chat. That is the most... Um, effective way not to forget your question and to get answers to them. Um, so that, those are the two main things. And if you have any technical um, issues, you can as well write it in the chat and um, you will be direct message um, by one of my colleagues to help you with any technical challenge you may have. Um, I'm just going to pause here and introduce Ms. Adriana Valenzuela who is the program manager for the Youth Leadership Program at the Global Center on Adaptation. And Adriana will talk about what we're going to do today um, and what we can expect out of this session. Adriana, over to you. Thanks. Thank you very much, Joshua. And good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. I am delighted to welcome to the second Youth Adaptation Dialogue with a very special topic, that is what skills are needed to promote and foster the creation of adaptation jobs. And then today we have an extraordinary panel because we are bringing together the international organizations, United Nations, youth leader, youth organizations, but also today the private sector. Today we are going to hear about experiences in Ghana, Canada, Indonesia. And also we have a very interactive session to hear from you about what do you think, what skills are needed uh, that will be also coordinated by the, one of the young leaders from the jungle, the constituency of youth of the UNFCCC from Pakistan. Then uh, I, I wanted to start today mentioning that today is the World Youth Skills Day. And uh, it's a day to recognize and celebrate the innovations and the world that young people are leading all over the world. And to start, I would like to welcome Professor Anthony Nyon, who is the director of the Global Center on Adaptation in Africa, but also who is the director for climate change and green growth in the African Development Bank. Uh, Anthony has been one of the leaders mobilizing solutions, not only in Africa, but also worldwide, with uh, extensive experience working on uh, sustainability, environmental, and climate change issues, and also one of the persons supporting the youth leadership program. Then, uh, Anthony, thank you very much for accepting this invitation, and I would like that you share with us what is the Global Center on Adaptation and what the Global Center on Adaptation is doing to promote um, a skills development and the creation of jobs for young people. Over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Adriana. Thanks so very much, youth, colleagues, young people. I really miss that period of youth that, uh, you know, I really would have loved to be a young person 
at this time. You know, we always hear that youth are the future. I don't agree with that. For me, youth are the present. The future has caught up with us here and now. We can't be waiting for the youth for tomorrow anymore. Beyond demanding change, you have the energy, passion, and creativity to be leaders in bringing about the lasting change that the world needs. Numerous examples from Microsoft to Facebook show that innovation is driven by young people. As adaptation to climate change needs innovative solutions, I'm convinced that it is you, the young people, who can drive this best by developing and implementing solutions. It is therefore a pleasure for me to join you all here today in this dialogue on climate jobs and entrepreneurship. While Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg might have been located in the USA, innovation is by no means limited to the developed world. Take Kenya, for instance, a developing country leapfrogged landline telephone connections and invented payment by phone. This is now innovation that is being used worldwide. It shows what the youth can do and are capable of doing when sufficiently empowered. What many countries lack, however, is the training, the skill development, and financial support systems that allow young people to make use of their passion and realize their ambitions and ideas. Inadequate soft and hard skills to be successful in the job market or as entrepreneurs drive youth unemployment. Existing education does not yet focus on climate adaptation and potential solutions. So we are aware of this gap. As a consequence, your potential to accelerate adaptation and to drive economic development through jobs and entrepreneurship for adaptation is yet untapped, especially for Africa, where 60% of the population is below 25 years and the median age is 19.7 years. This is indeed regrettable. Therefore, at the Global Center on Adaptation, we realize this as well. As the Africa Regional Director of GCN, I'm dedicated and excited to work with you to overcome existing blockages and to support you in leading Africa's adaptation. To do this, the Global Center on Adaptation has created the Africa Adaptation Acceleration Program, which we fondly call the Triple AP. This program that aims to mobilize $12.5 billion by 2025 to support adaptation in Africa puts youth and other young people in the center of our adaptation actions. Through the Youth Adaptation Challenge, it will support at least 300 youth and young people by 2025 to develop and implement promising business ideas for adaptation. Our massive open online course on adaptation currently allows young people from all over the world to easily enhance their knowledge. With dedicated professional and vocational trainings on smart climate business practices, proposal writing, we will further support young people to develop adaptation businesses, enhance their successful participation at the job market, and also enable you to create jobs that integrate a focus on adaptation. By unlocking $3 billion in credits for youth-led adaptation businesses, the Global Center on Adaptation will mobilize the needed financial resources to realize the ideas that you develop. Combined, this program can provide young people with what they need to be leaders in adaptation. By participating in this event today, you have shown that you have the enthusiasm, the drive, and the potential to be a leader. I commend that very strongly. What is needed now is for you to join us in walking the talk. And the Global Center on Adaptation is here to support you. And that's why we're having this event. So good luck in your presentations, in your deliberations. I want us to remain the champions that we are, and we will support you. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Tony. And as you said, the, the, the Global Sector on Adaptation aims to empower youth to drive the adaptation agenda and adaptation solutions. And with a special focus on creating adaptation jobs and promoting entrepreneurship and innovative solutions. Thank you very much for your leadership and especially to your support to the Youth Leadership Program. And now we are going Thank to you. move- can I, so can I just interrupt you a bit? Of if course. there's one burning question that, because I'll soon drop off for the African Union event. If there's a burning question that you think I need to respond to, it's uh, maybe I could just take that one. Anyone have any question, please feel free. Now is the opportunity and you can post the question through the chat or directly just raise your hand and then uh, Josh will help us to un unmute you. Then now is the opportunity. If you want to know something about climate change, adaptation, or what is GCA doing, please feel free to ask our director, Professor Anthony Nion. Any question or any okay, question perfect. from the, the young speakers that we have? Okay, Mona no Lisa, question. Mo, Dominique? I think, uh, Anthony, thank you for the chance. I think I would like to know more how to engage with climate change adaptation and how to get really uh, I mean, you guys offer the, the helps for the young people. And my question would be very simple. How can we access that? How, how can we get in touch with you and really get to know your program and see if there is any way we can, uh, we can get the support we need um, in the ground level? Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. And um, I, I really welcome that Adriana, who is here with you, leads a program on youth and adaptation. And um, we will, uh, she will definitely lead you, direct you, you know, on how to engage with us uh, for the, there are a lot of opportunities, a lot of programs, we are planning a lot of things in the offing, you know, and it's, if you don't participate in it, then it's wasted. So we really look forward to working with you uh, going forward beyond these monthly meetings. There are other initiatives we can work together. I'll just Bye. take two more. Sorry. And we have now, Tony, two more, uh, Dominique yeah. and Kenny. Then Dominique, please go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for, for your intervention, Professor. Um, just a quick question around how, you know, you're linking um, your work and, and the, the work of the center to COVID recovery and how you're kind of weaving the messages of investing in, in youth and climate adaptation in this time of recovery. And yeah, thank, thanks very much. We, we've all used the word build back better, build forward better, recover. It's, it's very central. We've realized that the coping mechanisms we use in adaptation are exactly what has seen us through part of the COVID issues. And we're getting to seeing where we can no longer be separating, you know, streams of finance. This is financing COVID. This is financing climate change. Both of them come together because this gives us an opportunity to do things better, actually, you know, that we don't have to continue rebuild the way we build that put us in the problem in the first instance. So we are encouraging and we are supporting that every resource that goes into COVID recovery must demonstrate how it's building resilience, particularly for us, how it's helping to curb climate emissions, you know, it's very important for us. So that's, 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 that's a given. So every of our programs basically looks at COVID, economy, climate. Excellent. Kenneth, we go with you. Yes, so I would just like to say thank you, I guess, on behalf of the young people to Professor Nyong and the Global Center for Adaptation, because I think this is a very timely announcement and a very encouraging intervention from the GCA to be able to support the efforts of the young people, especially during today uh, or today uh, when we are celebrating the World Youth Skills Day. So incentives, investments, and also rewarding the young people for what they are doing is really very, very important. And as you have 
uh, pointed out Professor Nyong that the education and skills gaps are very, very um, uh, prominent. And this is also something that we are trying to address in the education sector. So UNESCO has been trying to support the member states and we hope to have the opportunity to work with the GCA very uh, soon. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. And Thank I you wish very you much. very much. Thank you very much to our regional director, Professor Anthony Nyon. And now we are going to move forward to hear about one, what young leaders are doing. And we are going to listen three case studies. We are going to listen what is happening in Ghana, Canada, and Indonesia. And the methodology will be, we will have the presentation of three of them. And after that, we have two keynote listeners who will also provide ideas and recommendations about their experiences. Uh, I would like to introduce our three speakers. Uh, the first one is Betsy Osei. She's the project coordinator of the Green African Youth Organization in Ghana. Betsy is, uh, had been working, uh, creating jobs through trainings and skills development in both adaptation and mitigation. And she's also the co-founder of Tree for Biodiversity, that is a training uh, program for youth in afforestation. Our second uh, young speaker is Dominique Soris. She is the executive director and one of the founders of the Youth Climate Lab, Lab in Canada. And, and Dominique had been also very active at the national and international level promoting climate uh, adaptation and skills development. And our third speaker is Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa, she is from Indonesia and she's working not only uh, with a German NGO in Indonesia, but as well, she created and funded a group uh, working with the local community in her village. Then without any other introduction, you all are the ones that are leading actions on the ground. Then we are very pleased to celebrate the World Youth Skills Day. And please, Betsy, share with us what is happening in Ghana and how are you empowering young people to create uh, adaptation jobs? Betsy, over to you. The strength and progress of a community lies on the development of their youth. Therefore, why not equip them with the necessary skills needed to adapt to the impact of climate change. This is an inspiration from my 24 years of growing and working within communities. My name is Betty Osei Bonsu. I'm the project coordinator for Green Africa Youth Organization. And I must say, I am glad to be on this platform because right now, the CAC is currently building my communication skills. Thank you very much. Green Africa Youth Organization is a youth led gender balance advocacy group that focuses on environmental sustainability and community development. Our thematic areas include climate change, disaster risk reduction, and circular economy. In Ghana and across the world, we are faced with issues that transcend from climate change, affecting changes in weather patterns to dry grounds less fertile soils, causing changes and depreciations in agricultural farming. Also, waste management is also the order of the day, where this causes flood risk and extinction of biodiversity. Not forgetting youth unemployment. This is the top, as young individuals are left to thrive and survive on their own. Professor Anthony, when, when speaking, mentioned that we have 60% of the youth currently unemployed. So as, a, company, as a, a country or as the world, how are we actually developing if we have 60% unemployed? So this leads us to what Gaio is able to do when it comes to contributing to community skills development in our various projects and locations. We have our sustainable community project. We have our green product development. We have our university eco clubs and water for adaptation. With our sustainable community project, 
this is the first community-led project in Ghana that has currently developed a zero waste model, model that is being replicated across communities and regions in Accra and in Ghana, where we are able to divert majority of waste from landfills to be used to generate revenue for communities, including women and youth. With our sustainable community projects, our highlight is the fertilizers from that we what that we are able to generate from organic waste collected from the communities. With this, we are able to generate fertilizers that are used for farming. It's also encouraging and reducing the amount of toxic that goes into the crops that we eat. And with this, we are able to provide jobs and build skills of youth within communities. We have our product, product development in green jobs. And this is a particular project where we pioneered in mining areas. With this, we are trying to enhance the socioeconomic opportunities for women and youth whilst providing them alternative livelihoods with existing resorts, resources present in their community through soft, hard skills and vocational training. From the picture just displayed on my background, you can see the fifth picture where there are some displayed soap. These are locally made soap that has been done using waste. When I say waste, an example is cocoa pods. This is left around the communities. So with this, we're able to train the youth and women to work with this cocoa pot to generate resources that they are able to generate revenue from. Apart from this, we have our university eco clubs. You can see some youth in their pictures. The aim is to create ecopreneurs, climate leaders, and increase employability of youth through professional working experience. And with this, we have over 300 students with Echo Clubs established in four university campuses where we are training these particular young ones to be climate leaders. Apart from that, we are also providing both soft and hard skills to young people in communities to be able to utilize the resource they have to generate revenue. You can see from my introduction, it was mentioned that I co-founded the Trees for Biodiversity Initiative. And with this currently, we've worked with four district assemblies and forestry commission to undergo planting exercises in, within communities. Currently, as I speak on the 24th of July, we're embarking on the three planting exercise where we seek to plant 10,000 tree seedlings within and around Accra, specifically Madina, in partnership with the La Quantanan Madina Municipal Assembly. And lastly, our water for adaptation project. With this project, we've been able to construct mechanized boreholes that were able to serve the purpose of providing communities with portable drinking water, as well as providing irrigation from farming. With our project, We've been able to provide various solutions, including training youth in agroecology ecosystem restorations, include our trees for biodiversity, circular waste management, where they're able to convert waste to resource, organic to compost, and which is used for farming. With this, our impacts have been in diverse fields, from knowledge and skills development to our sustainable community projects, including locally produced healthy, nutritious food, healthy soil, increased green space, and climate and environmental jobs for youth. You can see just on my screen is some compost that has been produced from communities generated revenues. And you can see them just displayed here. Currently, they had that as of 2020, they were able to produce 500 kilograms of compost that they sold to farmers to generate livelihood and, and revenue. Currently, they've tripled that amount. And you can see just from the bags of what they have been creating here, all from organic waste generated from communities. I would like to end here and say that building a climate ready adaptation society is an urgent matter that cannot be postponed according to the UNESCO Univoc report on new skills in climate change. Lastly, whilst Gaio is preserving the environment through effective waste management, we are also improving livelihood through green jobs creation and promoting community development through skills 
generation and revenue generation. Thank you very much. My name is Betty Osaibonsu. Thank you very much, Betty, for sharing with, with us concrete initiative and how you are empowering young entrepreneurs and creating adaptation and green jobs in Ghana. Then we are going to move forward from Africa. We are going to Canada to hear from Dominic. Dominic, please share with us what is happening in Canada and what are you doing with your organization to develop skills to create entrepreneurship and adaptation solutions. Dominic, over to you. Hello, good morning. Bon matin tout le monde. I hope that you can see my screen. I will yes. see my screen. Okay, awesome. Great. Well, I'm Dominique, and as, as I should have mentioned, I'm the co founder and the executive director of Youth Climate Lab. I'm really excited to share uh, more about our work. So, we're based in Canada, but we work globally. Um, so, today I'll, I'll just share a little bit of, of, um, of our approach and, and the work that we do. Um, before beginning, um, I want to acknowledge that I'm calling in from the traditional territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabeg, um, which is currently known as Ottawa, Canada. And so this screenshot here just shows you uh, all the traditional land of, of First Nations, of, our indig of, of Indigenous folks on uh, Turtle Island and the overlay of, of all the different territories. Um, and we, we always start our work um, and any presentations with, with this slide and this acknowledgement because so much of, of climate action um, is, is tied to land um, and part of our, of our disconnection um, and, and sort of the reasons why we have climate change in the first place is, is part of it is, is this disconnection to land. And so really trying to ground our work in, in that connection and acknowledging where we're calling in from. Um, okay, so we are Youth Climate Lab. Um, we are a youth for youth lab dedicated to creating innovative projects. Um, we recognize that young people shake things up um, and are already doing incredible work in their communities, but often lack access to the skills and opportunities um, to scale their, their impact. And so we exist to try to support that. We started in May 2017, and, and since then, um, we've worked with over 40 partners to design 30, um, more than 30 projects, reaching young people in 77 countries. Um, and our, our theory of change is, is this sort of image that you see here. To us, and, and I think to all of us, you know, climate change is a systemic issue, and so we focus on equipping young people to reimagine, rebuild the flawed systems that are holding in place climate inaction. And we do that with a focus on three key sort of system shifts, a, a skill shift uh, to equip young people to transform their communities and, and build the, the climate futures that they deserve, a policy shift to really challenge the ways that young people understand and can influence policy, and a finance shi shift to disrupt capital flow so that young people can start and scale their solutions. Um, and it's with sort of this systemic lens that we uh, operate as a lab, um, which means that basically we design and we work with different partners to experiment with different projects that focus on, on driving one or all of these shifts. Um, and we have sort of three main types of projects. Uh, we have our toolbox, um, as well as our cohort programs and our collectives, which I'll, I'll go into detail. Um, I don't have much time, so and I'll like zoom through some of our projects. And like I said, we have 30 projects, um, so we have a lot. But basically, sort of generally, our approach is really anchored in co-designing with, with, our, with our partners. We work with um, you know, a wide array of partners from Indigenous communities to international organizations. Uh, and really, we center experimentation. Um, we center also you know, valuing the living and lived experiences of young people as expertise. And we focus mostly on soft skills building, future-proof skills, as we like to say, which is really the four C's of creativity, communication, critical thinking, collaboration. Um, and a lot of our approach is supporting young people to learn these skills and apply them by taking action in their communities to the international stage. And by taking action, we also increase their access to mentors, access to networks, increase their employability, and give them that practical experience um, that really sort of unlocks so many different lessons. 
Um, and, and how we do that is really with, with the principle of meeting young people where they're at. So we'll go to communities, we host pro programs virtually, and we really experiment with not only what we, what we do, but how we do it. And across the board is our, you know, we do this by employing young people. Uh, so our youth for youth model sort of enables us to do that. So I know I don't have much time, so I'm just going to go through some examples of, of projects. So here is one of our tools that's in our toolbox. We call this Policy Gem, and it is basically a workshop really focused on building quick skills in a sort of two to four hour format. Um, the idea is really to support young people to understand big policy issues and make them actionable and relevant to them so that they can co-create policy recommendations. As part of our cohorts, we run a number of different sort of annual um, cohorts. One of them is our Green Printers program that we developed with Global Green Growth Institute and Student Energy. And it's a 12 week virtual incubator program and global business plan competition. And each year we support about 15 teams um, to go through this 12 week incubator uh, covering a, a number of different topics. And again, with that focus on those, those future proof skills that I mentioned. Um, and at the end of the program, um, the teams compete for prize money and an opportunity to, to pitch at the annual meeting of uh, the Global Green Growth Institute. And then lastly, this sort of third work, third area of work that we do is, is collectives. And we're, we've just launched this this year with our Climate Resilience Collective, which is um, a partnership with the International Center for Climate Change and Development uh, based in Bangladesh. Uh, as well as the Assembly of First Nations, the Yukon region, and the Council of Yukon First Nations. So what this is, is two cohort programs that are focused on leadership and skills building, administered and co-designed with our partners in the North and the South. And then we bring them together to sort of explore and foster synergies around knowledge sharing and skills building and understanding how um, not only the similarities in terms of climate impacts, but also resilience um, and, and how the cohorts can support each other. Okay, that is, I think I stayed within the limit, um, but yeah, very excited to, to, to speak more and, and to learn more about what everyone else is doing. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Dominique. And as you said, uh, developing skills, uh, transformation in policy, but also in finance, and how these three uh, these three are inter interconnected and are needed for the transformation. Then now we from Canada, we are going to move forward, and we are going to Asia, and we are going to hear from Mona Lisa. Uh, with her experience in Indonesia, especially empowering and developing skills and knowledge with the local communities. Mona Lisa, it's over to you. Thank you, Joshua. Please play the video. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, we realized that there is a problem with the audio of the video, but you guys can see that uh, there is a, there is the English version here that you can read the subtitle. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you, Adriana. And um, wow, it's, um, it's a bit overwhelming, Adriana. It's such a, it's unbelievable, actually, to be able to sit here and sharing with you guys a presentation from Betty and Dominic. You girls are wonderful. Dominic, I love, I would love to get to know more about your work. And Betty, I need to learn more from you, definitely. So again, thank you for the opportunity. A little bit word about the video. It's about, I'm actually having the product here. We are creating a straw from a grass that only grows in a peatland area. So 
peatland area holding uh, it's very rich of uh, carbon and we are suffering from fire every year in indonesia one of the the big reason why we uh we, we are working in this area and uh i'm a co-founder of limarupa.id which is a um, group of young people who is willing to support sustainable uh, community um, and with promoting their business and etc. So I would say the, the program, the idea of the project is very simple. We try to find alternative solutions uh, which can create income opportunity for the people in the village. And that's how we see how we can uh, tackle the bigger problem. We start from there. Besides that, I'm also a head of the farmer group in my village. That's why, Betty, I need to learn more from you. So I'm kind of doing the same like what Bet Betty did. Uh, in Indonesia, we try to, uh, we have a problem with land degradation. Uh, and what I'm doing with the farmer group is we try to, to reforest uh, this, this degraded land by planting trees and also vegetables and fruits uh, in a sustainable farming practices. And yeah, there are so many things we can share more, but yeah, I would like to hear more again later in the discussion. Thank you, Adriana, that's all from my side. Thank you very much, Mona Lisa. And these are examples of concrete projects and how young people can build these bridges to connect with the communities and to bring solutions. Now, uh, what we will have is uh, we, will, we have a two keynote uh, listeners. And I am delighted to welcome Kenneth uh, Abraham. She is working with uh, UNESCO Unibog. And she has been also coordinating with different partners, including governments, technical and uh, vocational institution, but as well other partners to green the technical and, uh, and uh, the technical and vocational training. And also we have Marta Martinez from the private sector because we have said the private sector also plays an important role in this transformation and she works with uh, Iberdrola. Then what we are going to do is we have here these three wonderful experiences from Ghana, Canada and Indonesia. And what I would like to do is to invite uh, Kenneth uh, Abraham, who uh, is also um, leading concrete programs on greening the uh, technical and vocational training to give some recommendations and feedback to the three young speakers. Then Kenneth, thank you for joining us and over to you. Thank you very much, Adriana. And thanks a lot to our three young and very energetic um, uh, youth, uh, really inspiring. And I think um, you have a lot of things going on on your plate, but nevertheless, you are very driven. And this really gives us a lot of um, uh, reason to really work harder because if the young people are working much harder, I mean, we have to do much more. And so I am from UNESCO Univoc, and as what Adriana said, um, we are working with different Tibet institutions to green the education and training. And I think what we heard from you today, the different projects that you have just presented, the Youth Lab, the, the Green Africa Youth Organization's um, initiatives for women and the young people, and the project of, of uh, Mona Lisa in Indonesia, these are very um, relevant relevant in terms of uh, the, the subject matter and also the, 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 uh, the need to address the gaps that we are recognizing and, and observing in, in many different parts of the world. So in terms, I, I tried to identify three or four criteria to assess the different and diverse approaches that you are doing. And I think that in terms of the target group, you are really um, targeting uh, a very good segment of the society um, especially uh, creating the opportunities uh, for, for the young people and women uh, to engage in this kind of climate engagement and action. And these are very important, especially for people who are not always given the opportunity to access such um, training opportunity and practical learning uh, by being engaged in the activity. So I think in terms of the target group, you are very much um, um, uh, doing a lot of relevant 
relevant work. In terms of, uh, in terms of the intensity of your actions and also the diversity of the approach, I think they are really very relevant and um, intense enough to drive change. And I can only congratulate you for all the efforts that you are doing. In terms of the urgency of what you're doing, I think um, there is no question that these are all urgent, very much linked with the SDGs and the climate adaptation that we are looking for. And as um, our uh, Canadian youth mentioned, you are the shakers and movers. And I think this is a very important character for you to really impact not only other young people, but also um, the institutions. So what I wanted to say here is that um, we have been recognizing a rising employ unemployment and um, uh, this is very persistent uh, all over the world. And I think some of the projects emphasize the value of entrepreneurial learning. The development of entrepreneurship programs, I think these are very effective um, as a means to address uh, the current unemployment and especially with the pandemic um, um, driving many out of job or reducing the number of hours that they have, uh, which means also they have a reduced um, uh, wages. So drawing from your experiences, um, I think there is a need to give learners the tools to be able to create their own jobs and also to determine the career paths. And I think you are very much supporting this direction through the efforts that you are doing. And doing so will help to develop an entrepreneurial mindset to be able to perform your role as an employee, as global and digital citizens. And I mentioned about uh, digital citizens, because since the pandemic has pushed many to shift to dig digital business, um, they're also being um, expected to acquire green and digital skills. And these are going together with the, uh, uh, the need to have more entrepreneurial skills and mindsets. And they are very critical for the future of the workforce. Um, now, some of you have mentioned about training women and young people. And here, I just want to remind also of the importance of ensuring that um, the, the skills that the young people are recognizing through non-formal and informal ways will at some point need to be also recognized by the system, by the mechanisms that are in place in the country. Why is this important? Is because you also want the time, that, the time that the young people are spending to be of value for their further development, for the planning of their career paths. And I think this is important. Uh, it's not your job to, of course, develop the mechanisms to recognize the skills, but working with established institutions, for example, Tibet training institutions, vocational centers, who are um, um, already set to, to provide all these um, uh, certifications, for example, and and have the possibility to recognize the skills and the knowledge and the competencies that are being acquired by the young people. So it is also important to note uh, that we have to create opportunities to work with them so that um, um, you will be able to, to work with young people who will also um, um, obtain valuable credentials um, apart from the practical learning experiences, the value, valuable skills that they can also use to plan their career um, in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Kenneth. And we really look forward to continue working with UNESCO Univoc, especially in the implementation of the African Acceleration Program and greening uh, the Tibet, and especially now with these three skills that you highlighted, entrepreneurial, green, and digital skills. Uh, now, also, I would like to invite all our participants to share with us what is happening, what is, uh, what are also your thoughts. Then uh, I want to invite also another young leader, Irfan Ulan, who is also a member of the Yongo, the youth constituency of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. And he will just run the session with Mentimeter. And I want that all the participants can share uh, your thoughts. Then, um, Irfan, over to you. Please guide us with this interactive session with Mentimeter. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you so much. Uh, and thank you everyone for joining, especially the participant. Uh, I think so it's time that we hear from you and thanks for your patience and for your timing to listen to our great speaker and keynote uh, taker. 
So we would love to also to to um, to hear from you that what actually you are feeling, what do you think? So for that, we would like to to use Mentimeter. So kindly, uh, uh, the chat uh, it's uh, the link is in the chat. Uh, you just need to uh, click on it. You can also access it via your mobile phone and also with your laptop. Uh, and yeah, the code is also there. So Josh, ah, okay, you people are so fast. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> we need this enthusiasm. Yeah, the country where you are from. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay, so we will wait for. Okay, we are waiting for the people to come. Yeah. Netherlands, Indonesia, Italy, India, Canada, Mexico. Uh, okay, so Mexico, uh, Indonesia, and Netherlands is winning the, the race. Okay, let's see. Okay, okay. Spain is there. Uh, okay, still Netherlands and Indonesia in the top. South Africa, nice. Germany, good. Zimbabwe, Nigeria, nice, nice. Uh, okay, India is also winning now. <laughs> okay, yeah. Canada, yeah. So yeah, we will give some more time because just 19 people participated. So, and then we can move on to our next uh, question, yeah. Yeah, but thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, it, it's, it's gonna show the enthusiasm of young people and we really, we really need to, to look forward to such platform. We are like young people from around the globe come together, share their ideas. So thank you so much for participating. Uh, and we can move to our next question, I think. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, next question is what skill are needed to create climate job for youth? So uh, to the, all the participants, we would like to hear from you as well. That what actually the skill youth are needed to have a green jobs, uh, and especially if you talk about build big better. So yeah. It's time to share your thoughts. Yeah. Okay, collaboration, creativity, communication. I still spin. Okay. Um, yeah, that's uh, some nice uh, reflection is coming. Environmental sensitivity, uh, leadership qualities. Yeah, with GC is working on it. Yeah. Uh, stakeholder engagement, manufacturing, uh, communication, co-creation, yeah, still communication on the lead. Uh, okay, educational skill, innovation, yeah, creativity, good practice, yeah. So yeah, come on, come on, we need some more, <laughs> more skill that you would like to, to acquire. Yeah, a partnership building, urban planning, holistic approaches, so on cool, flexibility, leadership. Okay, still communication is, I think so yeah, after this COVID, it's, it's more important this communication, especially digital literacy and communication. Innovation is also winning the race, yeah, it's great. Uh, yeah, so no, I would like to ask our, um, keynote listener that what actually their reflection uh, on uh, on this um, these different skills. So yeah, over to you, uh, Ms. Kenneth from UNESCO, please. Thank you so much. Um, I think the survey uh, really captures the, the, the important, the essentials uh, that, that we say are needed uh, for the young people to be able to contribute. Um, I think we can further um, uh, categorize them into what we call the transversal skills. Um, so we talk about transversal skills that you can apply across the different um, um, the different occupations and jobs that are oriented to sustainability, for example, um, minimizing pollution, uh, what are the mechanisms, uh, understanding the, the ways to minimize pollution in any types of jobs, um, how to design sustainably or how to create um, um, sustainable products that uh, takes into consideration the user's point of view at, at the same time, the environmental aspect. So these are um, important transversal green skills that 
the young people, I hope, will be able to acquire um, as they move forward. And also the core skills, um, which are very much um, aligned with what our uh, youth have already given. So decision-making skills, leadership has been already mentioned. And I think that the readiness to learn, lifelong learning, and ability and the desire to understand and become aware of the environment. So these are uh, core skills that um, we can also say generic school skills that they can apply um, in any kinds of jobs that the young people will um, have in their in their lifetime. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Ms. Kinney, for highlighting the leadership uh, skills and decision-making skills by, by young people uh, and also the sustainability aspect yeah, that we need to really bring into our life. Uh, I know I would like to ask Martha, so um, could you also share your insight uh, about these skills? Kinsha, please, Martha. Thank you, Ivan. Uh, well, here I'm, um, I agree with the comments having said uh, up to now. No? I'm very impressed also by the by the the works of our three young leaders, no? and, and the projects they have described. I think as an energy company, I would like to add here also on the on the hard skills and the technical skills, which I also saw in that they are digital skills, technical skills, and it's it's. Um, so going forward, we will need uh, also these technical skills in a wide range of fields. No? We're seeing how technology is providing a lot of uh, opportunities and we're seeing a lot of innovation coming in there in, in our sector. It's renewables, it's energy efficiency. It's also new materials or new ways of doing things to also increase adaptation and, and resilience in the infrastructures. It's also digitization. Uh, we are here at a moment where we're combining many things so there's a climate crisis and we're also in a in a very rapid transformation on on digital and, and ia and all these um, um technologies that can help us especially if we're thinking of climate services i think that's one area where we cannot forget about those technical technical um let's say skills and, and knowledge that we need flexibility i would highlight that also experimentation which was dominic was mentioning no and, and and, and I think there's lots of experimentation in those, also in the projects, no? So that, that and the, the, these are inherent to, to youth and young people, no? How to experiment and to learning by, by doing or by, by um, until you get it right. So I'll, I'll leave it here. I would agree. Yeah. With Thank you so much, Martin, especially for highlighting the, uh, the digitization and especially with, with COVID-19, which really emphasized the digital literacy, especially for the youth. So yeah, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, and now I would, uh, okay, okay, yeah, sure. So we can skip the to the uh, we can go to the next question. Yes, George, please. Next slide. Uh, so yeah, again to the participant, we would love to hear from you. Back are the skills mentioned are enough, especially keeping this up? Uh, could I ask if you are not speaking to mute yourself, please? So yeah, to the participant, I would like to ask again that are the skill mentioned here um, is enough or do we need more skill, especially for the young people keeping this um, COVID uh, pandemic situation, uh, this current pandemic situation, especially if we talk about build uh, big, better and greener. Yeah, no, okay. Good to hear that. Okay, oh, okay, a lot of people go with no. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah, no, I would like to to ask our amazing speaker and uh, first of all, thank you so much for the amazing work which you are doing. So now I would like to ask you to jump in and, and share about your inside, your thought, your reflection as well, that what do you think are the skill mentioned there is enough or do the young people need to have more skills? So yeah, over to you, uh, maybe. And I would like to start with uh, Miss Mona Lisa from Indonesia. Thanks, Irfan. So are skills enough? Uh, no. <laughs> I would start with, uh, of course, you need the skills, right? But what I would like to share with uh, all of you guys is that I think we need to remind ourselves or to encourage ourselves to make mistakes because I realized that's the biggest 
um, challenge I had in the beginning, I always telling myself that, hey, I see this problem since I was born, since I, um, since I live in Kalimantan my whole life, basically. And then I tell myself, no way I could even think about a solution. Who am I? Like, I'm too small for this. Even, even being here and talk in front of you guys, it makes me, um, it, I'm, I'm totally sweating now. It's scary to develop, to start this something. It's scary, especially when you know you have a big and beautiful and ambitious goal. So I think I would like to remind all of us for that again, that it's okay to make mistakes and let's make more mistakes because that's the only way we can grow. Yeah, yeah. Thank Thanks you so much. Mom. Yeah, thank you so much, Mona Lisa. Uh, and yeah, over to Betty and Dominic and please uh, be precise and if you could answer just in one sentence because we're running out of time, please. Um, Dominic, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. I think skills are not enough. The young people, they need the finance to practice that skills being given. And apart from that, not only the finances also necessary, but the available opportunity for them to see that, okay, there is these skills available and there is the opportunity to advance the skills to another level. So skills are not enough. We need the finance. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. A bit and I, I agree with, with, with both Betty and Mona Lisa. Um, maybe adding to that is, you know, um, paid internships, it's mentors, it's opportunities, like Mona Lisa mentioned, to share what we're doing. Um, and it is clear, you know, pathways. And there's a lot of opportunities in, in the green economy, but how is it relevant to young people? And how is it relevant to our skills and interests? And so um, it's not just skills. So I agree with everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, and I would like to ask the last question uh, to our amazing um, keynote um, uh, listener. So uh, maybe I would like to start with Ms. Marta. So um, if we talk about your organization, so what actually your organization is doing to overcome the identified challenges, like the, the, the challenges mentioned by, by youth in, in the chat. So yeah, we would like to hear your reflection. Yeah. Thank you. Just let me briefly give um, like one message on the energy sector. Uh, I think that uh, I, just to, from being inside and, and Iberdrola is a utility originally from, from Spain, but we, we operate uh, globally. Um, so I think that for us in the energy sector, we are totally aware that, uh, that in this path to a decarbonized and a climate-friendly economy, that we have a key role to play. We've been engaged as Iberdrola for the last 20 years, uh, engaged in, in changing our, our energy mix and, and our model to make it, uh, to make it, let's say, to, to make it decarbonized. No? And, and we're totally, we're completely aligned and we're really convinced uh, that this is the way to go. And, and what we are seeing in these 20 years is that we've seen technologies evolve. We're seeing how renewables are totally competitive now and they have, they are mature technologies. They can deliver the technical capabilities, and so so they, they can be a driver and bring about a lot of um, decarbonization. No? And also think of the energy sector as a backbone. Or the electricity sector also is a backbone to economic resilience in general. No? And that's why why we have one of the SDGs uh, focused on on sustainable energy for all, no, and energy access for all. Um, so for us now, we, we see that in the energy sector, we have a, a, a key contribution for the green economy and that it's materializing opportunities um, for everybody, but for youth especially, because we count on youth and, and all the young people in the world really to make these transformations and accelerate them. I think that uh, uh, by being and uh, by shaking, let's say the, the normal way of doing things, and we have great examples, uh, here with our speakers, then they they shake things and they and they and they can drive different changes and, and and different not transform things and do things in a different way. So we've mentioned some areas where there's opportunities in innovation and digitization in scaling things and and making uh, bigger let's say hydromet services and so on. And uh, so so 
At Iberjola, we've launched a very, well, very impressive uh, investment plan focused on what I mentioned, on this green electricity sector. But we're also complementing that with some activities and being aware that we need to, to promote and, and bring in youth into decision making and into, into how you do things, really, really make things better. Um, so we have, well, we have some agreements with different universities, we have also international programs on, on um, internships and, and grants for investigation and so on. We are also doing a specific hackathons or challenges. No? So as a private sector, we have our set of challenges to, to run our business, let's say, and then we, we were conducting some challenges open to, to young people and entrepreneurs and to bring us ideas. And then we have a venture um, like, like a, you know, yeah, a whole program to actually make those initiatives and, and you know, uh, bring them to life and finance those, those projects, those innovative projects. And we also focus, and I think one of the, one of the key values uh, on, on these projects that, that have been presented is knowledge of the local community, knowledge of firsthand and community, not only the problems, but the values and the priorities and, and cultural mindset and so on. And that is very important to tackle some of these adaptation issues and even some, not even adaptation, but mitigation also. So we we have also, we liaise also at the local level with in the older communities we we work with to, well, to see if, and, and, and craft programs to actually contribute to the specific needs on the communities, no? which is something you cannot do uh, top down. No? Yeah, yeah. And, and we also have another piece there is on, is on um, training and awareness raising in, for the education community. I, I, you know, there's, there's a lot to do there in the, in the gap, in the skills gap. And yeah. as a utility company, we see it. We have sometimes difficulties to find a trained a, you know, young people or, or not even young people, just people trained and, and that are interested also in this engineering by electrical and, and all this all this field no? especially this is also another area of specific yes. programs for women women and STEM. yeah thank you so much Marta so uh, yeah thank you so much uh, and yeah um, it's time to um, we continue youth and the youth need to be more on driving seat and to be more on uh, having this effective leadership role thank you so much uh, and I would like to to ask Ms. Kinit from UNESCO and there's also the question in the chat that what actually uh, UNESCO is doing to overcome this identified challenges by you. Uh, so um, Ms. Kinit, please be precise because we are running out of time. Thank you yes. so much. Yes, thank you. Um, so I'll be very quick uh, just to mention that UNESCO Univoc supports um, the advocacy building. So making different stakeholders aware of the SDGs and how we can green education and training systems. We're also involved in building capacities of the institutions. And we know that the institutions are the window to train the young people. And so it is very important to, to uh, educate the educators, um, facilitate the, the upgrading of their skills and also the the development and transformation of institutions so that the young people will be motivated. They will not drop out of school. They will be um, um, engaged in programs that they know will help them land a job um, after their education and training. So these are the focus of uh, the work that we are doing. And we're also trying to um, facilitate peer learning. So we have peer learning networks at the level of teachers, at the level of leaders, and hopefully we can work uh, more closely with the young people. So we are celebrating the World Youth Skills Day, and this is our window to get um, to know many young people. And I encourage you to please share your stories with us because this is very important for us to inspire others, to also help uh, uh, facilitate peer learning of, of of young students who are still um, uh, not very clear about what they want to do with their lives. And I think you are providing very good examples and inspirations that others can look up to. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Kinit, for sharing your, your reflection and your nice insight. And also, thank you so much uh, for these three amazing panelists. So uh, keep uh, spirit on, keep us inspired. And also, thank you for all those who participated um, in this short uh, Mentimeter survey. Thank you so much. Uh, and over to you, Andrea.
Uh, Andrea, you are muted. Thank you very much, Ifra. And thank you to all the participants for sharing with us your vision and your thoughts. Then the Global Center on Adaptation is an international organization that works as a solution broker, mobilizing adaptation solutions. And for us, empowering youth and youth leadership is crucial. And for that, we last year launched the Youth Adaptation uh, Network. Currently, there are members in over 130 countries, and you will be invited to be part. Then on the chat, we are going to put, to include the uh, link, but also the email, how you can be part. As part of the capacity building program, every month we are hosting the Youth Adaptation Dialogue. Our next dialogue will take place on the 12th of August on the occasion of the International Youth Day. But we, we, what we want to bring is a platform where we connect specialists and decision makers with young leaders to learn together. Today, some of the reflections is that we need partnership, we need uh, collaboration, we need learn by doing. We need this exchange and especially platforms that can help to connect all of us. Skills are fundamental and today has been a great celebration, a celebration to recognize the key role that young people play to mobilize adaptation solution. It's a day also to celebrate partnership and collaboration between organization. And it's a day also to encourage everyone to take part in the solution. I think that climate change is one of the global challenges, but also it provides a unique opportunity to move forward and to create a climate resilient developing, development, but especially empowering all the communities and young people. Last uh, year, also young people from all over the world participate in consultations. And the result is the global call to action that outline key activities and initiatives that are needed for this decade. Uh, all this information is also on our website. I invite you to visit our website. We will um, share this information here on the chat. And in very soon to continue uh, following us, we are going to launch the Global Youth Adaptation Solution Challenge to support youth entrepreneurs. And also we are going to uh, launch a couple of training, uh, trainings to develop skills, especially for young people. Then a special thanks to all our amazing uh, panelists and speakers, especially Mona Lisa, um, as well, uh, the, uh, the, the, the other two joint speakers that we have today, and uh, Dominique and Betty, and also Marta and Kenneth. It has been an opportunity really to bring together private sector, international organizations, young leaders. And now I also would like that everyone, uh, please, tour on your camera if you uh, have not done and we are going to take a family photo then uh, josh please guide us with this family photo and the idea you will uh, have the recording on uh, our website but as well it will be available on the youtube channel of the global center on adaptation then uh, uh, a big smile to celebrate the world youth skills day All right, so on the count of three, everyone give a big smile. <laughs> One, two, three. Okay, so I have one frame. I think there are, about, there are quite some people, so I'm gonna just keep taking them. And then please keep the smile on. Then I'll take another one. one two, three. Awesome, thank you so much. And we look forward to seeing you all in the next Youth Adaptation Dialogue on the 12th of August to celebrate the International Youth Day. Thank you very much also to all the team that have been supporting the organization of this uh, event today. And we look forward to continue working with you to mobilize adaptation and climate solution. Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>